Okay, so this is basically my e-bike system, and I'll show you how I charge my e-bike. But basically what we have here is a 12 cell um, lithium iron phosphate pack. So this is 12 series. So you could see here we have terminal you know, 2 um, all the way up to 13, right? So it's 12 cells because uh, one of them is ground, so it's only 13 minus 1 is 12. So we have 12 in series here and 12 in series there. And the way, um, this is a lithium iron phosphate, and um, lithium iron phosphate has a um, recommended charge as a 3.6 volts per cell. So take 3.6 times 12, you get around 45. So I have three power supplies, actually. Well, you see four, you could see, um, if I get the scissors, all right, what the hell fell on the floor? Okay, so if I get the scissors, you could see we have the first one, two, three, and four except the fourth one isn't plugged into anything. As you could see, there's no, the lights off. There's, it's just there, because um, just in case for future use. But basically, um, since I need 45 volts, I have um, 48 volts is gonna work, because I have four in series is 48. So what I have, you can only use three, and you have to use a boost converter, um, a buck converter. And this will convert the 40, the 36 volts to 45 volts and the, that goes to this. And the way the charging works is this white is the positive. I know it's backwards um, in an AC circuit, I believe the black is pos the black is the hot, but then here the white is the hot, the white's the positive. Um, um, and this basically goes to a positive terminal of the battery, which is right here, plus 13. And see, it goes to the 13th on balance. So there's also a balance lead there too. These are all the balance leads the balance leads clip on. The negative, the black, of the boost converter goes to the BMS, goes to the BMS um, battery minus, and then the pack minus is this green wire, right? And it goes into here. The pack goes to the negative, as you could see by the negative here. So then, basically, once this is fully charged, this BMS will trip and no current will flow through. So for example, if I have my D, my clamp meter and I set it to DC, um, DC current, you could see there is um, 2.5 amps throwing through this wire. This is kind of low. I'm really kind of surprised. I think it's because I have a crappy boost converter because these power supplies are 500 watts. Um, so three, that's 1500 watts right there and this battery could have a much higher charge rating, but it's only drawing two and a half amps, which is, you know, around 150 watts-ish. Um, it'll charge it, it just takes forever, basically. So maybe I should just buy another boost converter, different one, and maybe um, get more current flowing through. So that's how that works. Um, so that's how you basically charge your batteries with a um, server power supplies. And the way the server power supplies are combined in series, um, I could explain that basically, but um, the way it works is if I, I, I don't want to see each power supply has a, um, has a positive and negative, right? So for example, if I, if I measure on this power supply, let's do horizontal filming. That's a real crime here, right? So if I measure this upside down, what the hell? All right, this is retarded. Um, here we go. So if I measure, this is the third, no, that's the fourth power supply. If I may, yeah, I got shocked. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, this is a one, one handed job, but um, as you could see here, you're just gonna have to take my word, but basically um, if you look at this power supply, these are the data wires, these, um, these, these things are the data wires, and these pins will tell the power supply to create the 12 volts. Um, it, uh, you know, power supplies have a post and with the computer self-check, so you have to trick it into thinking everything's fine. So uh, there's YouTube videos on which pins to wire where, and then what we have here is we have a negative, which is here, and the positive here. So all you have to do is combine the negative to positive in series. So if you look here, this is the negative of this power supply, it goes to the positive with the wire cap of this one. The bottom one, we have the negative here, 
goes to the positive of that one. This is going to be unique to your power supply, so it doesn't matter that the wiring you can't see, because just remember to combine negative and positive. And also, you have to isolate that because a lot of you can't have a shared common ground with the power supplies. Otherwise, the 12 volts you combine them in series, you'll just you're not going to get 12 volts. You'll get I mean 36. You'll get 12 because the, they'll just go to ground. So I have these wooden spacers. A lot of people mess around with the case and open it up and like take crap out. That's a waste of time. All you have to do when you tape them together, put these wooden sta spacers so they never touch. And then for the plug, um, make sure it's a two-prong plug. And if you have a three-prong plug, what you can do, you could actually go to Harbor Freight, get these little um, three-prong to two-prong adapters. So basically, you eliminate the ground. Um, the idea is you don't want a ground when you're combining server power supplies in series. So you have to use these plugs to, to eliminate any ground. So um, yeah, um, basically one last thing about these server power supplies is some of them are kind of intelligent. They have like a post. And when I, when I put this power supply to the batteries without the boost converter, the power supply would actually turn off and these green lights would go amber. And that's because the power supply has like a post and I think it has, it has some kind of intelligence and it measured that I wasn't actually charging like a resistive load or whatever. And it, so basically the boost converter actually acts as an isolation transformer. So the power supply doesn't know anything and um, when it does its post or whatever, it, it tricks it. So um, if your power supply doesn't charge batteries, but it'll actually charge like a, you put it off a resistor. Like I have some kiln wire that I used and basically I shorted the power supply against itself and it put out like 30 amps. And I'm like, okay, if it's putting out 30 amps against a kiln wire, why isn't it putting out, you know, current against this battery? And that was because, well, I found out I need the isolation transformer, which is a boost converter, basically. It just isolates um, one side from the other. So, yeah, just quick summarize. This is how you charge your batteries, basically. And then when I'm done here, what I'll do is I'll just unclip this crap and put it on the next battery. Or I'm thinking of just wiring these batteries in parallel so that this way it'll balance them all together so I don't have to undo all these clips because I'm lazy and it should charge faster so um, yeah that's kind of well actually I don't know if it'll charge faster um, I, I, yeah so that's how it works um, if you have any questions do let me know um, I'd be happy to answer them there's also another e-bike I made this cool project I mean it goes these batteries are kind of recycled age 123s it's they're okay i guess i think the top speed on this bike is 43 miles an hour but the range is kind of garbage um because these batteries are kind of old they're from like 2003 basically and but at least the top speed's still there um so yeah any questions and i'd be more than happy to answer them um basically like i said we have the four power supplies um in series for instance if you want to do 72 96 volts I mean, you could probably get away with two power supplies and just have a higher boost converter to step it up. But I wanted to go easy on the boost converter, so I bought three. Um, they were really cheap off eBay. They were like $10 a pop. So basically, quick summary, you buy your power supplies, wire them in series, eliminate the ground, no common ground, so use these wood spacers so the metal casings don't touch. So this way, if they touch, then they could short each other out or whatever. Then you have the boost converters, and it goes to the this... And this is taped, so the standoffs are insulated from the case. Everything has to have its own separate. This goes to the boost converter. Boost converter steps up 36 volts from power supply to 45. These just go to the plus and minus the battery, and it goes across the BMS. And um, this is how you do the BMS thing. I know a lot of you guys have the BMS built into the pack, but that's what I didn't do. I, I don't run these cells with the BMS. I don't use a BMS, so... I don't really need one, so I just use it during charging just for safety purposes. Um, so that's basically how that's done. And then it just, um, so yeah, any questions, like I said, um, you, uh, feel free to reach out. And this clamp meter is actually handy because when you know your batteries are done charging, what you can do is you could, this is a DC clamp meter. You could select to DC and it'll show zero. You know, I'm clamping, like I said, I got two amps. Oh, I've got three and a half amps now. Maybe it's pumping out more juice. Maybe it takes some time, but 
Um, now it's taken more current, but this will go to zero, right? So then when this goes to zero, you know, you're fully charged. And um, so that that's always helpful. I think a DC clamp meter is definitely a must if we're doing with an e-bikes DC current and a DC clamp meter, except this one kind of died. I don't think it's that accurate. I have to buy another one just for better calibration, but um, so yeah. All right, um, peace out. Um, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel. We got a lot of great content. And um, like and share this video with your friends um, just to help out the YouTube algorithm.